Okay, happy Friday, guys. This is the penultimate, that means not the last one, but the last but one um, lesson that we have got on the butterfly lion, unfortunately. And today we are reading chapter 12, which is called The Butterfly Lion, a little bit like the title of the book. We never had children of our own, just the white prince, and I can tell you he was enough of a family for anyone. He roamed free in the park just as we had planned he would. He chased the deer and the rabbits whenever he felt like it, but he never did learn how to kill for himself. You can't teach old lions new tricks. He lived well, on venison mostly, and slept on the sofa on the land on a sofa on the landing. I wouldn't have had him inside our bedroom, no matter how often Bertie asked. You have to draw the line somewhere. Bertie's leg never recovered completely. When it was bad, he often needed a stick, or me, or the lion to lean on. It pained him a lot, particularly when the weather was cold and damp and he never slept well. On Sundays, the three of us would wander the park together and he would sit on top of the wood on top of Wood Hill with his arm around his old friend's neck and I would fly kites. As you know, I've always loved kites and so it turned out did the lion who pounced on several of them as they landed, savaged them and ripped them to pieces. The lion never showed any interest in escaping and even if he wanted to, the park wall was too high for an old lion to jump. Wherever Bertie went, he wanted to go too. And if ever Bertie went out in the car, then he'd sit by me near the stove in the kitchen and watch me with those great amber eyes, listening all the while for the sound of Bertie's car coming up the gravel to the front of The old lion lived on to a ripe old age, but he became stiff in his legs and could see very little towards the end. He spent his last days stretched out asleep at Bertie's feet, right where you're sitting now. When he died, we buried him at the bottom of the hill out there. Bertie wanted it that way so that he could always see the spot from the kitchen window. I suggested we plant a tree in case we forgot where he was. I'll never forget, he said fiercely. Never. And besides, he deserves a lot more than a tree. Bertie grieved on for weeks, months after the lion died. There was nothing I could do to cheer him or even console him. He would sit for hours in his room or go off on long walks all on his own. He seemed so shut away inside himself, so distant. Try as I did, I could not reach him. Then one day I was in the kitchen here, when I saw him hurrying down the hill, waving his stick and shouting for me. I got it, he cried as he came in. I got it at last. He showed me the end of his stick. It was white. See that, Millie? Chalk. It's chalk underneath, isn't it? So, I said, you know the famous white horse on the hillside at Uffington, the one they carved out of the chalk a thousand years ago? That horse never died, did it? It's still alive, isn't it? Well, that's what we're going to do. So it'll never be forgotten. We'll carve the white prince out on the hillside. He'll be there forever and he'll be white forever too. It'll take a bit of time, won't it? I said. We've got plenty, haven't we? He replied with the same smile he had smiled at me when he was a ten-year-old boy, asking me if he could come back and mend my kite for me. It took the next twenty years to do it. Every spare hour we had, we were up there, scraping away with spades and trowels, and we had buckets and wheelbarrows to carry away the turf and the earth. It was hard, back-breaking work, but it was a labour of love. We did it, Bertie and I. We did it together. Paws, claws, tail, mane, until he was whole and perfect in every detail. It was just after we'd finished that the butterflies first came. We'd noticed that when the sun comes out after the rain in the summer, the butterflies, Adonis Blues they are, I looked them up, come out to drink on the chalk face. Then the white prince becomes a butterfly lion and breathes again like a living creature. So now you know how Bertie's white lion became the white prince and how the white prince became our butterfly lion. Okay, end of that chapter. And again, that's a lovely chapter. Your five questions on it are, what does you have to draw, you have to draw the line somewhere mean on page 103? Okay, where did Millie and Bertie bury the lion? What was Bertie's idea to remember the lion? How long did it take for them to create the lion? And why did the lion become known as the butterfly lion? Okay, there are your sentences. Pause the video while you have a go at answering.
Okay, so you have to draw the line somewhere means you have to put your foot down sometimes and say no. Okay, so she was saying no, I've let the lion into my house, Bertie. I've let him come into the house and but I am saying no to him coming and sleeping in the bedroom. Um, Bertie and Millie buried the lion at the bottom of the hill. Bertie's idea to remember the lion was to create a large chalk lion on the hillside. It took the next 20 years to create the lion on the hill. And the lion became known as the butterfly lion because when the sun came out after the rain in the summer, Adonis blue butterflies would fly around the chalk lion and make him look alive. Okay, your three brain power questions are, what was life like for the lion in England? Use evidence from the text to support your answer. So use page 103 to help you with that one. Why do you think the three of them would walk up Wood Hill and fly a kite on a Sunday? And question eight, how do you think Bertie felt when the lion died? How do you know this? Pause the video, have a go. Okay, so page 103. Life for the lion in England was good. I would say it was good. It was pleasant. He had a nice life in England. I think this because, what can we find in the text? Okay. I think this because he got to roam around free in the park. He got to chase the deer and the rabbits whenever he felt like it. But he didn't learn to kill from himself. So he was free, okay? I also think that the life for the lion in England was good, because it says here he lived well on venison mostly, okay? Because he was fed. He was not hungry like he was in France, okay? And he slept on the sofa in the landing, on the landing. So he was comfortable. He was happy. He was fed, okay? All of those things that Bertie promised he would keep him when we first met him, okay? In seven, why do you think the three of them would walk up Wood Hill to fly a kite on a Sunday. Okay, so, where does it say? Oh, here, we've got, on Sundays, the three of us would wander the park together. If you think back to the start of the story, Bertie and Millie's story started at Wood Hill, didn't it? So it's quite nice, and I think that's why Michael Morpurgo's chosen for them to, to wander and to go on Sundays specifically on Sundays, not any other day of the week, on Sundays they used to go to Wood Hill, okay? They are now on, they are now going to Wood Hill on Sundays, okay? It's to show how the story has started at a place, it's gone all of its different ways and it's come back to, it's almost like it's their happy place where they met, okay? And question eight, how do you think Bertie felt when the lion died, okay? For this, I've got one rule. I don't want you to say sad. I want you to think of another emotion that he might be feeling, okay? The word I'm going to use in my answer, I think Bertie felt distraught when the lion died, okay? Distraught, so he was really, really upset. It says here, he grieved for weeks and months after the lion died. Months is a long time, okay? He I think he was distraught because he grieved for months, okay? There was nothing that Millie could do to cheer him up, okay? He'd spend a lot of time by himself in his room or going for walks, okay? And he was shut away inside himself. It tells us that there in the text, okay? So he's, it's almost like his mind was on something else. He was distraught, okay? Well done today, guys. Okay, last day on Monday of this book. I hope you're enjoying it so far. Okay. Good morning, year three. So for anybody that thought I was talking absolute rubbish yesterday, um, <laughs> talking about 24 hour clock, 
I don't understand where my misconception came from. Um, so the whole idea of having 24 hours in a day actually came from the ancient Egyptians. Um, however, what my dad was on about um, when teaching me was that how the military always used a 24 um, hour digital time as opposed to AM and PM because it is more precise. Um, and they tend to read out as 0400 or whatever um, hours. So that was where I got that from. Well done to anyone who um, had a little look into it themselves and found that out. Um, very impressed. Um, you obviously know more than I do. Um, okay, so let's mark yesterday's work and see how we got on. So um, using a 24 hour clock, I wanted you to convert these times into that. So six o'clock in the morning. Oh, it's not there. Let me do it. I want to do it. Right, I'm just going to write it. Um, with my pen instead then. Okay, so uh, the 24, yeah, six o'clock in the morning. So that would be zero, six, zero, zero. Because if it's in the morning, that means it's the sixth hour of that day, okay? After midnight. One o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, so that means it's been 11 o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock midday, and then the next hour after 12 is 13. Okay. Quarter past 10 in the morning, so it's in the morning, so it's still the 10th hour of the day and it's quarter past, which means it's 15 minutes. Excuse my handwriting on this. Um, quarter past 2 in the afternoon, so that means it's after 12 o'clock midday. So we have 12, um, 13, 14, so it would be 14 and then quarter past again, which is 15 minutes. Half past six in the evening, so again that's after 12 o'clock midday, so that's 12, then 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. That's 18, and then half past is 30 minutes past, it's 18.30. Okay, so the last one, it's how, what past what in the what is 18.15? Well, we've just found out that 18 is the same as six. So it's something past six. Now if it's 18, then it means it's after midday. So it's going to be in the evening. Um, and if it's 15 minutes past, that's what we've just practiced up here. So it's quarter past. Six in the evening. Okay, well done guys if you got those. Um, and please don't stress if you haven't. This is very difficult to do even at the best of times when we're in school and in class, let alone um, <laughs> through a video. So please, please don't stress it. Okay, you're secure it then. We will do this and we're all back together. Uh, secure it. So is Teddy correct? Now he says that if the time has an eight in it, it has to be eight o'clock. That is completely incorrect. So hopefully you've said no, that's ridiculous. You could have eight something, you could have literally any hour and you could have eight minutes past, oops. You could have 18 minutes past, you could have 28 minutes past and you could have 58 minutes past, okay? Um, you could also have 08, um, you could have 18. OK, as your hour. So you could have eight in the morning or six in the evening um, and any mi minutes past that. It could be one minute past, two minutes past, three minutes, so on and so forth. Doesn't always mean it's eight o'clock. So I just wanted you to have a little think about where else you might see eight and o'clock. If you see an eight, that doesn't mean it's eight o'clock. Um, it could be eight minutes. It could be 28 minutes. So well done if you have disagreed with him and if you've proved it by spotting um, any of those other numbers that it could have been, um, that it could have been minutes past, or it could have been um, six o'clock in the evening. Okay then, so for today's learning, we're on the 15th of May, and your LO, we're gonna carry on using the 24 hour clock, but we're gonna start looking at some of those tricky ones where we're looking at minutes two, so we have to look at the hour before, so it gets a little bit fiddly with the digital timing. Okay, but we're gonna have a go at it. Okay, so pause it now so you can write that down. Okie dokie then, so um, I've got the clock up again and I'm going to keep using this clock because it's got those 24 hour hours on for you. It's there to help you um, use it if you need it. If you want to do it in your head, you can do it in your head. 
Um, what I tend to do is sometimes if I haven't got it in front of me um, and I'm trying to work out what um, number it will be using the 24 hour clock. If you put 12 in your head and count on from 12, so 12 and I say 13, if I look at my hands, I can, I've got my thumb up. And so that means it's one o'clock, but in the afternoon, 14, I've got two fingers, 15, I've got three fingers. Um, that's another way we can do, um, we can use to help us solve that. Okay, so um, I've got time here, it says five past two in the afternoon. So I'm just gonna use my arrows first, my clock hands to get those on. So five past two in the afternoon. So I've got two is there and then I'm five minutes. So from 12, five minutes past two. Okay, five minutes past two in the afternoon. Now it's in the afternoon, so it's gone past midday. So it's gone through all of your morning hours, all the way up to the 12th hour of the day, okay? And so then it'll be 13, 14th hour of the day. So it's not two, it's the 14th hour of the day. So that will be written as 14.05, okay? That means it's five past two in the afternoon, okay? We're on the 14th hour of the, of the day, of the 24th hour. Okay, 25 past six in the morning. Okay, so we've done the first six hours of the day. Let's write, put those um, hands on. So 25 past six, I'm going to go a little bit past the six, because it's very nearly half past. And then 25 past, start from 12, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. There we go. Okay, now as it's in the morning, um, it's, we're still talking about 25 minutes past the sixth hour of the day, okay? So it is simply just the sixth hour because it's in the morning, 25, 6.25. Okie dokie, so I've put on here to try and help you um, when we're looking at minute two, okay? Um, it's where it's that really tricky and sometimes confusing um, thing when we talked before about using digital time, if you're looking at minutes two, when we're converting that into a digital time format, we actually have to kind of go backwards and say how many minutes past the hour is it? It's all very confusing. But if you know how many minutes two it is, you've just got to work out what goes with that to make sixty to make the full hour, and that's how many minutes past it is. Okay, so can you see here? I've already done this first one for you. It's twenty-five minutes to whatever hour, then it's 35 minutes past the hour before, because 30 at 20 is 50, 5 and 5 is 10, 50 at 10 is 60. Okay, let me get rid of that bit. Okay, so for this one, if I was to say that it's 25 to, uh, let's say, 4 in the afternoon. Whoops. Okay, so 25... Oh, I don't know those things are jumping all over me for. Okay, so it's 25 to 4. Let me just write down, but I'll do it with my pen. 25 to 4, I'll say p.m. So 25 to 4 in the afternoon, okay? So that means we're coming up to 4 o'clock, but when we're writing it in digital time, we're not going to say, we can't say 25 to something. We have to just say the hour that we've gone past, either going to be 15 or 3, and then how many minutes past that hour has it been? Okay, now I've already put in the minutes there for you. Can you see that obviously we know that's 30, 35. But instead of it being four, because that would be saying 4.35, that would actually be 25 to five. We look at the hour that we are still in, okay? What was the last o'clock? And it was three o'clock. Now this is in the afternoon, so it's gonna be 15.35, okay? So that's 25 to is 35 minutes past. 22, um, so let me get my thing out again. I'm gonna keep focusing on, I'm gonna imagine all these clocks are showing something in the afternoon so we can just practice that. Um, so 20 to, let's say 20 to one. Okay. There we go. 20 to 1 in the afternoon, so 20 to 1 p.m. Okay, so we're coming up to 1 o'clock in the afternoon, an hour after midday. So which hour are we still in then? We're still in the 12th hour. 
okay? And then how many minutes past the 12th hour has it been? So that's 30, 35, 40. You know, the 40 at 22 make 60. Okay, so 22 is equivalent in digital time as 40 minutes past. Okay, now we, for the next one, we're just kind of going up in increments each time. Okay, so we've got 25 to 22, and then quarter two, so 15 to, then 10 to, then 5 to. Okay, just try and make it as simple as possible um, when doing this through video. So, quarter two. So our minute hand is there, quarter to, and if I say quarter to uh, seven, quarter to seven p.m. in the evening, it's quarter to seven at night. So maybe round about when you're having a bath or a shower or something before bed or getting your teeth or putting in your PJs. Um, okay, so what hour are we still in? We've not got to seven o'clock yet. So which hour are we still in? Either the 6th or the 18th. Now, if it's quarter to 7 in the evening, p.m., that means it's going to be the 18th hour of the day. The 6th hour will be 6 in the morning, okay? Because remember, the day starts at midnight. So it's 18, and then how many minutes past 6 in the evening is it? So we've got to pan all the way around. We know that here is 30, 35, 40, 45. So it's 6, 18, 45. Okay, so a quarter means 15, 45 at 15 is 16. Okay, and then onto the bottom two, we've got 10 to something. So say um, I'll put 10 to 5. Have we done that one? 10 to 5. Okay, um, get my minute hands. So it's roughly. So there we go, 10 to, um, and then we're coming up to 5 o'clock, not quite at 5 o'clock yet. Okay, so 10 to 5, um, what hour are we still in? So, and I say 10 to 5 in the evening, so maybe getting ready for lunch, uh, for dinner, sorry. Um, now we're coming up to 10 to 5, okay, but we're not at 5 o'clock yet. So, we're going to look at the hour that we are still in. Okay, so it's the fourth hour after midday, okay, so it's 4 o'clock in the afternoon which means we are 16, okay, so it's 16, and then how many minutes past four o'clock has it been? Okay, so we know that's 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 16, 50, okay, and then for the last one, it is five to, and let's say five to nine at night, so time should all be in bed. Um, put my arrows on. Five, two, nine. Okay, five, no, my minute hand's gone a little bit over there. Five to nine. Um, so it's very, very nearly nine o'clock, although it actually looks like it is bank on nine. Um, it would maybe just be a little bit below, that may have done a bit too soon. Um, we are still in the eighth hour after midday. So if it's after midday, if it's in the evening, which hour now there's only going to be one, two, three, four hours left of the day. Okay, so it is 20. Okay, because it's in the evening, it's the 20th hour of that day. Um, and then how many minutes do we know? That's 45, 50, 55. Okay, 20, 55 is the same as 5 to. So on this page, only come back to it if you need to. So 25 minutes, if I, if I use my highlighter just to show you, 25 is 35 minutes past, 22 is 40, quarter to is 45, 10 to is 50, and 5 to is 55. Okay, so if you just remember those number bonds to 60, it will help you with today. So Quarter to five in the evening. Let's have a little practice at this one um, before you have a go yourself. So, quarter to, which means our minute hand's going to be there, and it's quarter to five, so it's coming up to five in the evening. Quarter to five in the evening. What is that going to be? You don't have to write this down in your book. You can try just saying it out loud, that's fine. 
So quarter to five, it's coming up to five o'clock. So we're still in the fourth hour, but it's in the evening. Okay, so it's not four o'clock in the morning. It's not the first four hours of the day. It's past midday. That means it's going to be 16. And then if it's quarter to, you can see where our minute hand is. And it's how many minutes past has it been? That's 30. Go back to this page to check if it's quarter to. I'm going to go back here. And then I've got quarter to is there. And the equivalent is 45 minutes. So just got to make the thing that can trick you here is if you put the wrong hour, really. I think you can work out the minutes as whether you get the right hour. Um, remember, when it's looking at minutes two, we have to put down the hour before. That we're already in. 10 to 6 in the evening. Okay, so this is 10 to 10 minutes until o'clock, and it's 10 to 6. It's very nearly 6 o'clock. Okay, now we're not on 6 o'clock yet, so which hour are we still in? The fifth hour past midday because it's in the evening, so it's the 17th hour of the day. So that's 17, and then you can always go back here and check. So where's 10 to? 10 to is down here. 10 to is equivalent to 50 minutes past the hour before. Okay, so it's 17, 50. Okay. Oh, yeah, going to do the last one then. 25 to 5 in the morning. So this is going to be 25 minutes until it's 5 o'clock in the morning. Okay, so 25 to 5 in the morning, which means it's still within the first five hours of the day. Okay, so if it's not quite five o'clock in the morning yet, then we need to use the hour before, which is four o'clock. Now, if it's in the morning, that means it's the first four hours of the day. So it's not um, 16, it's 04, it's the fourth hour of the day. And 25 to, we know that that's half, so that's 30, 35. So 435. And we know looking at that, that that's in the morning, not the afternoon, because it's the first four hours, four and a half hours of the day. OK, so if you'll do it, then I've left that clock up there for you. If you need to kind of zoom back to the other page to help you, that's absolutely fine. Um, hopefully you can see through all my scribblings all over it. I want you to do the same as yesterday, please, where you write, you do it. Then write number one, 20 to five in the morning is equal to what? And remember, guys, that whole idea is that you're using the 24 hour clock. I'm just checking that you know the difference between the two and that you can um, convert it into the 24 hour instead of using AM and PM. If you get really stuck and you're not sure, just practice using AM and PM again. That's absolutely fine. And at the bottom here, number six, um, what to what in the what is 1745. Okay, super. Right, so pause it now then so you can have a go at that and I'll meet you for the secure it. Okay, so you'll secure it. Um, the time is 13.55. Gary says that in five minutes, the time will be 13.60. Do you agree? We've talked about that earlier on, so hopefully you'll remember that. I think it was in yesterday's um, lesson. So have a little go at that. You can explain it for me. What would the time be in five minutes if you disagree with Gary? Um, have a look, Go back and have a look at one of the clocks if you want to. Um, that is fine. Right. Well done, guys. It's been a tricky week on time. Please, again, do not stress if you haven't got it all, all right? I'm not expecting you to. Like time, it, like I said before, time is one of the diff most difficult things to teach. So doing it through a learning video is difficult. So please don't stress if you haven't got it, all right? I just ask that you have a little go and just become a bit more aware of time. Um, practice the things that you know you need to practice, all right? Um, have a wonderful weekend, everybody. Thank you so much for working so, so hard. Send me any pictures of your work if you want to. Okay, see you soon. Have a great weekend, guys. Bye. Hello, everybody. Welcome to your writing session for today. Um, we'll start with our warm-up, and we've been learning this week about adverbial phrases. So my last little warm-up challenge for you about adverbial phrases this time is to think of your own adverbial phrases and put them in these sentences. So remember, these adverbs tell us where it happened, when it happened, or how it happened. Um, so your first sentence today is, she danced. So maybe you could tell me where she danced, or how she danced, or when she danced but you're going to fill in an adverb of a phrase at the end. I whispered, so you can tell me where I whispered, when I whispered, how I whispered. Add that as a phrase at the end. And then we've got Caroline got wet, and you can add an adverbial phrase onto that. So pause the video, copy out the three sentences, and complete them with your own adverbial phrase.
Okay, so let's have a look. You could have chosen all sorts of adverbial phrases for your sentences. They certainly don't need to be the same as mine. I'd be very surprised if any of you did the exactly the same as mine. Um, but these are some that you could have had. So she danced at the disco. At the disco tells us where that happened. I whispered extremely quietly. So extremely quietly is my adverbial phrase because he tells me how I whispered. And then we've got Caroline got wet when it rained last Thursday. And I've put last Thursday as my adverbial phrase because that tells me when it happened. I hope you've really enjoyed learning about adverbial phrases this week. Uh, we've got a new warm-up challenge ready for next week. Um, but I'm sure you're all much more clear on exactly what those are as we've progressed through this week. So well done, everybody. I'm really, really proud of you. So today, we're going to be carrying on with our work on the Harry Potter Studio Tour, but we're going to be writing little reports, little recounts that show the reader how we feel. Now, lots and lots of these days out and things like this, um, people will write a review at the end of it, and they post those reviews either online or uh, back to the companies to tell them how much they enjoyed their day. And usually some people really like their day out and they really enjoy it. But sometimes people write these when they really don't like their day out and they've not had a good time at all. Um, so I've got two reviews to show you, two opinions for the Harry Potter studio tour. Uh, one of these really liked it, one of them really hated it. Um, but I want you to do, while we are reading through this text, listen out for all the things that tell us, do they like it, do they not like it, and how do you know? Okay, so what words or phrases do they use that tells us that they like it or they really don't like it? So have a listen as we go through. The Harry Potter Studio Tour is the most wonderful experience in the world. It's not just for Harry Potter fans, but for anyone who loves cinema and Hermione Granger. The sets are absolutely incredible and they have added even more since last time. Hermione is obviously the best character from the Harry Potter series. She is smart, pretty, brave, and quite simply amazing. Hermione fans won't be disappointed as you can see her Yule dress, satchel, and her pile of books, as well as her school uniform and wand. Even queuing for a few hours to get in was so worth the wait. Although I was cold, it gave me so much more to think time to think about Hermione and what I might see when I got in. I squeezed past the crowds to get to the front and I could see everything really clearly. The Great Hall was by far the best room. It was breathtakingly beautiful and it was cool to see where Hermione would have sat. Having said that, I also felt that Nat Platform 9 and 3 quarters was stunning. It was really exactly as I had imagined it when reading the books. The shop was brilliant. There is something for everyone and it was great grabbing all of the Hermione dolls, wands, broomsticks and notebooks. And it was good value, although technically I didn't pay. I had a video taken on a green screen flying a broomstick and duelling in a real wand fight, which was the best thing ever. The studio really has the wow factor. It has been truly, it, and it truly has something for everyone, including Hermione fans. You will not be disappointed as this is the best family day out you can ever imagine. So hopefully you'll be able to tell me now how the author feels about visiting the Harry Potter studio tour. Do you think they had a good day or a bad day? Yeah, you're absolutely right. They had a brilliant day. So if you have a little look at this screen, this end part, can you spot a word or a phrase that tells you that she had a really, really good time? Just take a minute, have a think. Okay, I wonder what you spotted out. There were lots and lots you could have picked from. And this might be some of the ones that you picked. So she talks about it being the best room. Breathtakingly beautiful. Stunning. The shop was brilliant. Something for everything. Everyone. The best thing ever. It's got the wow factor. And you will not be disappointed. It's the best family day out you can ever imagine. So she definitely, definitely makes us understand that she really, really had a great time. Let's have a look at opinion two then. So we already know, because I told you at the start, that one of them was going to really like the day out and one of them was going to hate it. So we know that the first writer really enjoyed the day out. So let's look at the second one and see if you can spot the words and the phrases that tell us that he had a really, really bad day. Okay? So the Harry Potter studio tour has to be one of the worst experiences of all times. And to top it all off, you have to pay a ridiculous amount for the pleasure. 
After what felt like two hours of queuing, we were greeted by the introduction host, who tried to set the scene of things to come. This was underwhelming and didn't give me high hopes for the tour, which was lucky as the studio tour is little more than expensive museum of film props. The experiences felt tired and faded and not what you would expect for the entry price. There were no rides and nothing of real interest except the green screens where you can ride a broomstick across London. A fantastic thought until the price was announced as being £20. The tour makes you walk such long distances which is a struggle and unacceptable in this day and age. The layout was terrible. It was about a quarter mile just back to the entrance. The tour was about half a mile then a quarter of a mile to get back. There were virtually no help for people with walking difficulties and it's crowded so you feel like a herd of cattle. The choice of food was also terrible and extremely overpriced. I spent £10 on a panini and hot chocolate. £10! At the end of the tour you can visit the gift shop but be warned you'll need to take out a massive loan to buy anything because the shop is also ridiculously overpriced. I came away very disappointed by the whole experience. I didn't see a single one of the actors, not even a dragon, and there were no rides. It was a real letdown. So just like I asked you to do in the first one, we know that he hates it. He really doesn't like it. Can you spot some words and some phrases that tell us this from what you've read? Okay, did you spot some of these ones? Long distances, struggle, unacceptable, layout was terrible, virtually no help, crowded so you feel like a herd of cattle, terrible, extremely overpriced, ridiculously overpriced, very disappointed, a real letdown. I hope you spotted some of those. I think you can tell from just those words and phrases that he really, really had a bad day out. Um, so what do I want you to do today? So your task today is to write a recount which shows the reader how you feel, okay? So we're going to first choose a place to review, okay? It could be that you can imagine that you visited the Harry Potter studio from all the work that you did yesterday. Or if you can remember another day out that you've had where you have visited somewhere, you might want to write about that and you can write about either of them, it really doesn't matter. Then I want you to think about if you decide if you enjoyed your day out or you didn't, okay? Then I want you to list five things you want to talk about in your review, because that will form your different paragraphs. So if I went maybe to Alton Towers, I might want to talk about um, two of the rides that I went on. I might want to talk about the um, place that I ate. I might want to talk about the parking, which was a nightmare. So that would be, I didn't like that bit. And I might want to talk about maybe some fireworks or something that I saw at the end. So pick five things that you're gonna talk about in your review. Then, using your five things, pick words and phrases which show the reader that you really enjoyed it or that you really didn't enjoy it. So you're going to say the fabulous rides or the um, super long cues, okay, depending on what you want them to do. And then I want you to write your recount, remembering that I should be able to tell from the words that you choose whether you enjoyed your day or whether you didn't, okay? And once you've done that today, if you want to email them across, Miss Cunnington and Miss Foster will be happy to see them. Um, and we should be able to tell you whether you've managed to um, show the reader how you felt from the words that you've chosen. Okay, so pause the video now and have a go at writing your own recount. And then come back ready for your connected curriculum learning for the rest of the sweet lesson. Okay, we can't wait to see the recounts that you've been writing. Uh, connected curriculum for today. It's our very last day on this particular topic. So we've been learning about mountains and volcanoes and earthquakes in our world of wonders topic. Um, I left you a video to have a little look at all three of them. And then I asked you to choose something to look into more detail, mountains, earthquakes or volcanoes. You've then got a list of the different things and some exciting different ways to show us what you've been learning. Um, if you are going to do one of those challenges, this is your last day for mountains, volcanoes and earthquakes. We're moving on to something completely different next week. Um, so if these haven't really tickled your fancy, you can always have a look at the ones that are coming next week and see if you'd rather do some of those for your World of Wonders topic as well.
Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend, everybody. We shall see you back here on Monday and we cannot wait to see some of the exciting learning that you've been doing from home. We're so proud of you. You're all doing an absolutely brilliant job. Have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you soon. Bye, everyone.